2020. And are we going to have Caitlin take over right away or Mrs. Morris? Mm -hmm. I think Mr. Rick, we're going to do a roll call. Please. Okay, we'll do a roll call. Just okay. Cover. We'll start with Mrs. Wilson. Here. Mrs. DeBar. Present. Mrs. Karpalski. Here. Mr. Raska. Here. Mr. Schaefer. Here. Mr. Leary. Present. And Mr. Warburg. Here. All present. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is Mary Morris, the superintendent from the Chittawaga Central School District. And for tonight's budget hearing, I will start with some opening remarks, followed by Mrs. Takarsik's, our business manager's presentation. When I became your superintendent five years ago, you charged me with raising the academic rigor here at Chittawaga Central. This has been and is my focus. However, it often meant doing more with less. I've had three priorities during my tenure as superintendent. The first and top priority was creating an environment that inspires a high level of learning. As a district, we have invested in several major initiatives to achieve this goal including, but not limited to, best practices such as thoughtful classrooms, instructional coaching, K-8 aligned ELA and math curriculum, doubling the number of district reading specialists, increasing the time spent on ELA and math, a focus on writing, and culminating this coming year with an extensive implementation of the K-8 Readers and Writers Workshop model. The second priority is a focus on the whole child, as poverty and diversity of our student population continues to grow, so have the programs we invest in to help our students develop and thrive. We have invested in restorative practices, nonviolent crisis intervention, trauma-informed care, with a goal that every staff member receive this training. More significant over the last five years, even with reductions in the number of social workers and school counselors, we support a robust mental health team in each building. My third priority was to increase the capacity of every student in 21st century skills. Those four C's, critical thinking, cooperation, communication, and creativity, are accomplished several ways, including training students to utilize technology throughout the district. During my second year as superintendent, every UPK through grade four classroom was outfitted with a smart projector and or smart board. In grades seven through 12, every math classroom received these same smart projectors as well as some science classrooms. And in the summer of 2019, amid controversy where even some other administrators said, are you crazy? Every student in grades two through 12 received their own Chromebook. My goal for 2021 will be realized when every student will have their own device as kindergarten and first graders will have their own iPad. Having a device is one thing. Using it to improve instruction, teaching and learning is another. Staff, students, and most likely parents may need the professional development our application for learning. It is an ongoing challenge, one I look forward to meeting. This is why presenting our same budget is so important. Mrs. Takarsik, will you now explain the budget in more detail? Thank you, Mrs. Morris. The 2021 proposed budget is presented here in its New York State required three-part format. Those three parts are administrative, program, and capital. You'll see that year over year, the largest part of our budget increase is in the program expense category. As the name indicates, program expenses are any expense that are directly attributable to the instruction of and the services for our students. Consistent with prior years, our program expenses are over 75% of our total budget. 13% of our budget relates to capital expenses, which includes the cost to maintain our buildings, grounds, and facilities, and only 10% of our budget is related to the administration of our operations. Our proposed expenditures in the 2021 budget are increasing for salaries and benefits, transportation of students, legal fees, and a tax refund. A noteworthy item for this fiscal year is that these legal fees and tax refunds represent an anomaly in our spending. These costs do not occur every year and are out of our ability to control. One question that may come to mind is regarding the, food, the school food service expense. Even though the district has not been instructing on campus since March, we're required to provide breakfast and lunch for every student. 
these operations have continued and therefore these expenses have continued. However, the good news is our school food service program is financially self-sufficient. The expenses the district incurs to run the program are paid for by the state and federal child nutrition programs. We've already reduced or eliminated over $2 million in expenses from this budget that is presented here tonight. Specifically, we've cut our supplies and materials by 75%. We've reduced our conference expenses. We've reduced summer school programs. We eliminated transportation for pre-K students and after school activities. And we've also eliminated 31.5 full-time positions. The positions that have been eliminated include instructional staff, support staff, and administrative staff. Our proposed expenditures are funded by our proposed revenue. This includes a 2.5% increase in the local property tax levy. It also includes reductions in revenue. Since the economic downturn in March, the district will receive less in state aid this year than we did last year, and we will also receive less in local sales tax revenue. To offset these losses, the district is using $1.6 million in fund balance. Our fiscal responsibility during the COVID-19 crisis allowed us to save money from the 1920 budget year to use it here in the 2021 school year. That's what this use of fund balance represents. Presented here is a summary of the last 15 years of tax rates. We have been tax cap compliant every year since the inception of the tax cap. Also, in the last 15 years, the tax rate has decreased four times and our average percent increase is less than 1%. Over the last several years, the district has taken actions to reduce and control costs. These actions include utilizing purchasing through BOCES for cooperatively bid savings. We participate in a workers' compensation consortium for reduced employment costs. We offer lower cost health insurance plans to all instructional employees. We've implemented a part-time business management model. We've refinanced all eligible bonds. We participate in an energy cooperative for reduced rates on utilities. We've shared legal fees with the town of Cheektowaga. We purchase fuel for buses on a state contract. We utilize district vehicles for athletic contests instead of contract transportation. And we've centralized our copying and printing services. Our efforts to reduce and control our costs have not gone unnoticed. Every year, the Buffalo Business First ranks Western New York School District in administrative efficiency. Administrative efficiency measures how well districts operate with tight budgets and lean staff. The Cheektowaga Central School District has scored very well in the last two years. In 2019, the district ranked number 11 in Western New York, and in 2020, we ranked number nine, earning us five stars. Now, I'll turn it back over to Mrs. Morris. Thank you, Mrs. Pickard. Well done. Since 1991, I have felt that the children of this district are my children. I talk about them as my children, much to the chagrin of my staff, who often remind me that they are our children. Every decision I make or have made as a school counselor, a principal, a director, and as your superintendent has been made with the intent to provide extraordinary opportunity for each and every one of our students so that they graduate with promise for an exciting and successful future. At stake in a contingent budget are the following items, high school electives, mental health supports, small class sizes, universal pre-K, school resource officers, interscholastic athletics, extracurricular activities, field trips and its related transportation, repairs to our buildings and grounds, and outside use of facilities by the community. Some of those items, if a contingent budget stays, will have to be eliminated by the Board of Education. Your voice is critical in achieving our goals. Please support our children in receiving the services and resources that they deserve. Remember to vote on July 28, 2020. Thank you. Any questions? I do know we have some community members in the auditorium. Mrs. George, going to bring any questions? I'll go check. Thank okay, you, Mr. Wright. So for a moment, we will wait and see if we have any questions. Any questions? 